What are your golf clubs secretly saying about your golf game behind your back? I've been buying and selling golf clubs for over three years and teaching for 10 and there's some common themes I see in everyone's golf bags that correlates to either a mistake or advantage. So let me tell you about the secrets that your golf clubs are saying about you. Let's start off with a big one. Sky marks on the top of your club, specifically on the toe of your club. I've got a left-handed hybrid here that's seen better days and I'm gonna be able to show you a nice over-the-top swing with my left-handed swing because that is virtually what I am swinging it like at the moment. But we only want to know facts through this video. And number one, I know that there's dirt in between the club and ball at impact, meaning that you've got quite a steep swing, meaning that you're hitting the ground before the golf ball. And if you're starting to see marks on the right-hand side of that club, it's probably because you've got a closed club face at impact. You're turning it in because you don't want to leak it out to the right-hand side. Or if you're a left-handed player, left-hand side, meaning that you've probably got quite a strong grip or you're bowing your wrist, closing that club face at the top of the swing into that slicing direction. Now with all of these, this isn't a dead cert, but typically if I was to see these marks, on top of someone's hybrid, their swing path will be coming out to in and they will be very steep into the golf ball with a closed club face to try and offset all that side spin that they were putting on with their swing path. Simple trick, head cover on the ground in between your feet. I'll show you left-handed and right-handed setup so you can easily see the difference. And all we're trying to do here is get the club traveling more towards the target. Let's get rid of that side spin. Don't worry about your club face. Don't worry about your angle attack either because I feel these will work themselves out when you you start getting a bit of momentum going towards the target this is something to try on the range not on the golf course in a pressured environment and if you do go and try this tip and you see a bit less sky a few straighter shots and not necessarily as much curvature on your golf ball and then come back, leave this video a like, and comment down below. The next one's a bit sneaky. Nothing to do with the driver itself, but you can see the marks that have been presented. Someone's tried to repaint over the top of the driver here because they kept getting marks in the crown of it. And it's not from anything else in the golf bag apart from alignment sticks. As head covers have got a bit looser over the years, we don't necessarily have the sock anymore. We have a bit more of the glove. And sadly, what this does is when people put their driver in the back of their golf bag, that alignment stick rides all the way up the head cover and then scratches dead chips the top of the driver but here's the tip that I want to make you guys a lot of you use alignment sticks and use it as a drill on the driving range when you're in a square box rectangular box a lot of you won't be using your alignment stick on the golf course obviously not in competition but late in the evenings early mornings when it's quiet I highly recommend putting alignment stick down on the ground when you haven't got a square or a rectangle to guide you and some of you will be shocked at how out you are aligning yourself with the target that you have in mind but the best thing about this tip altogether is that it's one of the quickest simplest things to fix in your golf game that will have the most dramatic effect on your results this next telltale sign is one of the few signs i see in people's golf bags that i am pleasantly surprised by something that i want to see on wedges and irons especially if you've had them in your bag for a while and it's the fact that the faces has been worn away by dirt sand mud Everything that isn't involving a mat. And by no means am I saying practicing your wedge play off a mat is pointless. If anything, it's pretty much the same when it comes to a firm fairway and a gapping distance flighting, you name it. But winter time is the time for you to grind out your short game. As it's unfair, it's unlucky, it's not in the best condition. And if you can hone your wedge game from inside 50 yards, when you've got dodgy lies, you've got wet rough, you've got puddles, and you've got dirt in between the ball and your club over and over again, I can tell when I see someone's wedge or even see someone's iron. And don't get me wrong, I'm not expecting a tiger spot in the middle, but it does show the difference between a player that actually practices his short game for the golf course versus someone that just hits a few chips shots around their putting green before they go out or a few wedge shots at the start of their session to warm up and obviously everyone's golf game is different but the one big transition I had in my golf game was taking my nice clean Vokies to dirty rusted pieces of metal through one winter and oh boy did it change my short game. This is the club I want all of you to have in your golf bag not the tailor-made burner seven wood with a bubble shaft and not even a seven wood as well because some of you will hit this way too high 
but it's a classic. This is what I like to call a go-to club and I always love going through people's bags, lessons bags, people that I meet on the driving range, people that come up to me and ask me, what do you think of the golf bag? These are the ones I'm always interested in because I want to know why is this still in there and there's gonna be something about this club that just works, whether it's psychological, whether it's the shaft, whether it's the head design and the beautiful thing about our game of golf is that there is no one way confidently pick up and hit down the middle seven eight nine times out of ten and no technology no marketing no money is going to provide the same kind of confidence that this club gives you and if i save one person giving in to peer pressure of getting rid of that old faithful that does 180 160 200 220 whatever yardage it is but it finds fairways on those most narrow of golf holes then this is a worthwhile video making don't trade up that specific golf club until it stops working for you because I can guarantee you you won't be able to get fitted into a better one or more reliable one when it is in that particular situation whether it's on a golf holiday with your mates comp on the weekend club championships and whether it's a seven wood a three hybrid a two iron whatever it might be that thing is worth its weight in gold and then last but certainly not least the telltale sign that your short game is in a bit of disarray but within the same breath i would recommend this to most that are struggling with their chipping not as a quick fix but more as raw fundamentals. This to me is essentially a training aid, something that's got a lot of bounce, something that's very much upright as well when you stand over it. And all these attributes is something that you should be integrating into your short bump and runs if you're struggling with chipping. Now, everyone has different chipping actions and there's no right or wrong way as long as the ball finishes somewhat near the hole. But guys, we are amateur golfers. We are here to enjoy ourselves and also progress as quickly and efficiently as we can. For when I see something like this in someone's golf bag, first of all, I'm a bit excited as I'm up for the challenge of teaching them how to chip with any wedge. And the only reason that I would then progress for this to come out of the golf bag is it's just not that versatile. This is taking up a spot in your golf bag of one of those 14 places. But as time progresses, I want you to see this as a bit of a stopping gap. I want you to take the raw fundamentals that you're learning from this, i.e. not that much wrist action, getting the idea of a tiny bit of weight transfer between your feet in terms of touch and feel, and learning how the ball reacts in the air and then rolling across the green. If you take the same technique that you have with this club that you have here and implement it with one of your wedges, whether it's a 56, a 58, a 52, whatever it might be, you'll drastically see some improvements throughout your entire short game, which only leads into your pitch shots, which only leads into your half swings, which only leads into your full golf game. So guys, let me know if I miss any other telltale signs that you see in other people's golf bag and potentially we'll do episode two of this particular series. If you like this video, you might like this one up here on the right hand side. Catch you guys later.